a major country is collapsing. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today in our lead story today, the economy of a major country is in free fall, and they're about to do the unthinkable. And when you see what they're going to do, you're not going to believe it. And what I also want you to see is there are many other countries following, and they too will be forced with the unthinkable. Now let's over to Bloomberg where we picked today's story up on the headline as Boxing Day retail footfall up 4% in 2022. And this is suddenly giving people in the UK a lot of excitement that this mythical soft landing, that the global economy is actually going to materialize. But as we get into the details here, I want you to see as we go around the world that country after country is experiencing serious economic problems and they're all going to be faced with doing what this one country is. Compared to 2019, footfall remained 14.9% lower. Well, when you get past the headline, sometimes the truth comes out, indicating a continued impact from the rise of online shopping, the close proximity of Black Friday deterring further spending, and the potential restrictions of the cost of living crisis. And normally what we see here is all the other excuses. Well, it must be online shopping. Well, it must be due to the close proximity of some other holiday. The reality is, is consumer Consumers around the world have been faced with the same issue, is that their wages in form of total compensation are not keeping up with inflation, and that gives them less spending power as they don't have access to the credit they used to have because the banks are constricting the creation of credit and tightening lending standards. But when you get to the real issue, what you find out, it is everything to do with there's just not enough money in the global economy. However, we cannot afford to ignore that this isn't international visitors driving our recovery this winter, particularly on Boxing Day. Well, if it's not internal, it's got to be someone else that's creating the success in the economy because the cost of living crisis is squeezing domestic spending and dampening consumer confidence. So here you can see exactly what we've been talking about on the show is there's hope that maybe people that have money from other parts of the world will come and spend. And we need more of them because in reality, reality is a cost of living crisis is really having a major impact on economies all around the world. And if it doesn't turn around and quickly, and this is what is driving these political elites and central planners to try to get inflation down, because they believe if they can do that and the labor market holds up, which we're going to put to the test a little bit from now, well, then they've got the miracle situation. The problem is if they don't, well, it's all disastrous because it's imperative that the government heeds calls for an independent review of tax-free shopping to put us back on a level playing field with continental Europe. Of course, when things don't work, what do you need to do is cut taxes, find a way, and we're already seeing signs of stress here in the UK. But do they believe in the soft landing? Oh, yes. They do, but wait till they have to do the unthinkable, as you'll see later in today's show, as the UK economy is set to escape the hard landing and boost for, of course, those running for office and in office. This aggregate, the 52 economists surveyed by Bloomberg believe the Treasury and the Bank of England will engineer a soft landing for the economy next year with growth of 0.3% and a recession averted. And that would be absolutely amazing that we could actually go through a global pandemic, pump the global economy with stimulus from both fiscal and monetary, and then how just outrageous inflation, restrain it back, and then watch the economy run. Because if this were true, and this does work out, you have the new playbook going forward that anytime something goes wrong, governments are just going to flood the economy with one E, tell people there's going to be inflation, and then yank it back really hard and say, look, we did it. We got this thing figured out. The problem is they cannot see. They're going to crash the whole thing and soon. As no issue matters more to voters in the economy, well, that is stating the obvious with polls by YouGov and Imboss showing concerns about slipping living standards outraking those about health and immigration. The forecasts show the government may benefit from waiting until the summer to call a vote. This is the same issue, of course, the Biden administration is facing. They're saying the economy is good. The data says the economy is indeed good. However, consumers are saying it's not. They're saying, government, you do not understand. And believe me, when voters go to the polls, they vote with the first thing. 
and that is their wallet, and that's what politicians in power are concerned about all over the world. And they hope the backdrop will improve from the summer, that in the second half, growth picks up to a whopping 0.2% a quarter, this according to that same survey. The outlook is for consumers to come to the rescue, thanks to both government decisions and good luck. Now, notably, I love this, because, look, the government, who actually, you know, created all of the stimulus and then came to the rescue to save everybody by restraining inflation. Well, that was, of course, due to their decisive actions, which, of course, we know is nothing but even furthest from the truth. But I love the fact that they think it needs a little bit of good luck. Of course, it needs a lot of good luck, we'll note, as we're back on the path to a healthy, sustainable growth this month after the surprisingly sharp fall in inflation from 3.9% for November, from 4.6% the month before. Now, normally, you're hearing, of course, the surprising fall of inflation thanks to our decisive actions and a little bit of good luck. Well, we all need a little bit of good luck, and I can tell you all of these politicians that are in power they're going to need a whole lot of it by the time they get to see what voters really want as living standards still have some way to go to make up ground for loss during the pandemic and the cost of living crisis that now, of course, we're hearing from these political elites is over. But for the first time since 2018, households may feel noticeably better off. And that's one thing we can say is households should start to feel a little bit better, but then the bills are going to come in. They're going to see those credit card bills, those buy now, pay laters, those student loans. They're going to see everything cumulatively come to play here. And the government's saying, and you can see it, well, look, you're finally getting ahead. And it's kind of like, yes, I am getting ahead. But look at what I'm bringing with me over the last two years. That is going to continue to weigh on consumer spending at a time we desperately need consumers to spend and they're just not going to be able to. The UK's resilient labor market will also help. A surge in unemployment currently at 4.2% would destabilize the economy. But of course, the Bloomberg survey also showed that 24 of the 26 economists, meaning almost all of them, who provided responses think joblessness will be reigned below 5% next year. And as you're going to see here shortly, they could be further from the truth. They're living in a fantasy world. But one thing that should be surging higher is, of course, your trading account along Along with the Nasdaq, I know many of you look at the data and say, gosh, the economy is slowing down. How can the stock market be making new tall time highs? The question we should be asking is, how are you not taking advantage of this? We have the tools, we have the reports, and sometime in January, you asked for it. You said, Steve, could you make it so clear that I could just pull up the port and know what to buy? You can, and then you can take advantage of this. Now, remember, there are three coupon codes for a free month. Grab them before they're gone. Now, our CTA Timer Pro, it looks at the machine position and runs a historical overlay. We tell you when the market's an extreme high and extreme low, and when things are extreme low and they flip, you want to catch that because that's where the machines start buying that happened on the nasdaq on october 9th and then what happened our momentum timer pro report that looks at all those technical singles like the rsi and the macd and the stotch and all those other indicators that many find confusing we smooth it out into one daily report we take all those signals and we say look on a momentum basis on of course october 9th it had a one daily buy count positive momentum you want to put a buy it open right here on this green candlestick and even though the market went down initially and many would have gotten worried right now you'd be up 13.7 percent we make trading that easy and we're about to make it even easier get on the bandwagon while you can because you're going to find out just how easy it is to make money even in the coming down market as u.s initial jobless claims now rise to 218,000, more than estimated of course we know that as we look to this country that has seen their economy in free fall we look at our own we look around the world and say wow we're in pretty good shape and the question isn't are we in good shape is what are we going to do when it all falls apart well we're going to follow this other country country's path but let's take a look at what's going on in the u.s because the key parts of this report isn't the initial claims that went up to 218,000. historically that is still a very very low number continuing applications that are a proxy for the number of people collecting unemployment rose to 1.88 million and of course what do we continue to hear from the central elites that of course the labor market's robust is not going to fall apart 
All we have to do is get inflation down a little bit more and we nailed the soft landing. We're gonna get that gold medal of central banking that everybody says we couldn't do. We did it. Of course, as you're about to see, the labor market here is going to fall apart just as it is all around the world. And one thing we can note is that continued claims shown in red, these are people, that 1.88 million Americans against initial claims in blue. You notice initial claims, very, very low historically. That is indeed true. But what happens and what where initial claims go is where continued claims are already headed. So as you know, highlighted in yellow, you see continued claims rising, initial claims fall each and every time. So we can see already going into next year when we start looking at what happens after the holiday season is over and demand goes down, more notably, employers are going to lay people off. Initial claims are going to head higher unless these continued claims fall. And what does that mean for inflation? Well, as long as continued claims stay elevated, and even worse, if they continue to rise, as you can see, historically, continued claims go up. Well, inflation does come down, notably with a lag, which would make sense because the CPI is not an instantaneous metric. It is a lagged data source. But notably, we see that here in the 19, early 1990s, continuing claims started going higher in the late 80s. Well, there goes inflation to the downside. Same with the dot-com bubble. We went up the continued claims just continue to go higher. Of course, if you don't have the money to spend, inflation goes down. Same thing in the global financial crisis. And notably, look now, the timing of the bottom of continued claims and the peak of the consumer price index right on point. Of course, if continued claims continue to go higher, which they likely are at this point because there is no stimulus, there's no extra credit going on in the economy, the banks aren't lending, there's nothing that's really driving consumers here. And the problem is those on continued claims, the longer they are on them, the less they spend in the discretionary economy. And of course, that means retail sales go down, which is interesting because in the UK, they were super excited about that. But we can just tell you when people don't have enough money, as you can see here, continued claims going higher, retail sales going down, that going into the dot-com bubble, again, in the global financial crisis, and it's happening now. We got, of course, a holiday push due to credit, but what this means is the U.S. economy is now going to follow China's down, and take till you see what China is about to do. As China's 30-year yield hits the lowest since 2005 on deposit rate cuts, but this isn't the only move they're making. This is just the beginning. A cut to deposit rates mean the cost of funding for banks is lower and that they will be more motivated to buy bonds. Also, individual investors and corporates may consider redirecting their term deposits into financial products that typically invest in fixed income assets. This being done is a deliberate move to get interest rates down because we know in a debt-based economy, central bankers want to see rates go higher but if you do not get a corresponding increase in demand with higher rates there's only one direction they have to go then and it is lower china is leading that move now many of you are thinking there's no way that the u.s will lower rates yes the fed may trim them down a couple notches like they're predicting just to dial in the soft landing that they're about to stick the reality is once they start cutting they are not going to be able to stop they just don't understand those continued unemployment claims are a big landmine in the U.S. economy as the latest economic data in China pointed to a dire growth picture as home prices extended declines and credit growth remained slow. We note that in debt-based economies, credit growth is absolutely critical. Otherwise, you're going to see further disinflation or deflation as your economy slows, not to mention a gauge of foreign direct investment slump to a four-year low. <clears throat> And sure enough, the PBOC pledges to stimulate consumer prices. Here you see it amid deflation fears. Now, could you imagine going from all this fiscal and monetary stimulus to the point where inflation took off? We see it come crashing down. And could you imagine the central bankers around the world start talking about you know, having to cut massively cut rates to get interest rates down, to spur demand, and then they turn to the government and say, look, we aren't effective anymore. Because the Fed, I want you to understand, has been at 0%, not just once, but twice. If you think third time's gonna work, it's not, they're gonna get down to zero zero at some point during the next crisis. It's not going to work. And they're going to turn to the federal government and say, can you pump the economy again? We think we can get it the second time. We got close. The reality is we're going to hear calls for stimulus all around the world.
as the People's Bank of China vowed to implement a prudent monetary policy in targeted and effective manner because, well, that's the only way you should do it, even though they have no idea how to do it, and reaffirmed its pledge to push consumer prices higher. Of course, this according to the PBOC on Thursday. The bank concluded its quarterly monetary policy committee on Wednesday as their consumer prices have fallen 0.5% from a year earlier and producer costs dropped 3%, far more than expected, and deeper into negative territory, underscoring the challenges facing, of course, the economic recovery there. And of course, we know where China starts. You know, they export deflation around the world that is coming to America. If China's economy is not booming, that means they're not getting order demand. They're not getting things from the rest of the world because they're an exporter. And in order for them economy to boom, that means the rest of the world has to have demand. If China doesn't, with the lag, the rest of the world is about to go. And here we can see China year-end market rally takes hold as foreign funds pile in. Of course, any hopes of talks of stimulus and lower rate gets investors excited. And the upswing comes as the CSI 300 benchmark is poised to cap an unprecedented third straight year of losses. Now, of course, if you're reading that, you think from a trading perspective, there's money to be made here. When we do eventually get back to our normal Sunday show, we'll have an update. I told you on the last time we ran the Sunday show, watch symbol FXI. Watch what our reports tell you when to buy it, because when you see data like this, you should get excited, put it on your watch list, watch the reports. And again, that's why we want you to get that free month, because you too could be taking advantage and making a ton of money in the markets, because this is a self that's dragged valuation sharply lower over three years. It prompted some money managers to add to their holdings of the nation's equities heading into next year. Global equities have been gaining over the past few sessions, buoyed by bets the Federal Reserve will cut rates. Of course, we know when Fed cuts is not a good sign, but initially investors get very excited and we have problems as we look around because Hong Kong home prices are falling against signs of disinflation to the lowest level since 2017 as rents rise. Now we're talking deflation, but hang tight. The U.S., we have problems here too now in our housing market as pending home sales index slump to a new record low in November. This is going to be a big problem because the housing market in the U.S. drives the broad economy. If we're seeing people buying and transacting homes, that is great for business. When the housing market goes, well, watch out below. And here we can see with new home sales plummeting, playing catch down to reality, zero hedge notes, and existing home sales bouncing very modestly off record lows. Pending home sales were expected to rise modestly of 0.9%. However, they missed expectations and were unchanged in November after an upwardly revised October decline of minus 1.2% month over month. Now that pending home sales index still down 5% year over year. Of course, you want to get the housing market revived. You know, there's only one path rates need to go, and that is far below their prior lows to get people to move out of their homes. So many people want to retire elsewhere. They can't sell their home. Many young people do not want to rent. They want to buy a home, but prices are too high. Interest rates are too high. The economy is too weak. You watch and see what happens. When the housing market goes, well, it's usually too late. The Federal Reserve is chasing interest rates down. That is the risk here. We're not seeing a soft landing. We're seeing signs of something worse because although declining mortgage rates did not induce more home buyers to submit formal contracts in November, it has sparked a surge in interest as evidenced by a number of lockbox openings. Now, I want to understand here is that a lot of people in the real estate industry think that lower rates is just all we need to do to unlock all of this pent up demand. And one thing I caution them is it's not about rates. Just because rates go down does not mean people can buy because they'll need to finance it. And at this stage in the game, as rates are falling, it means financial conditions are tightening. Not easing, as the Fed will tell you. That means they're tightening. That means the banks are further going to tighten lending standards, making it harder to get a loan. And that's why you're seeing interest go up, but not sales. Watch out, because with mortgage rates falling further in December, leading to savings around 300 months from the recent cycle peak in rates, home sales must improve in 2024. Of course, I appreciate the optimism from the realtor providing those comments, but the reality is 
financial conditions are tightening. China is forced to do the unthinkable of putting out more stimulus to try to turn the economy around. UK is living in a fantasy world thinking that just a boost, recent boost in retail sales from foreigners is going to keep their economy from turning into a recession. And here in the US, continued claims that continue to rise will not lead to more housing sales. It's going to lead to the US economy entering recession at a time that we know small and mid-sized regional banks are still insolvent. And with that, I'm Steve Van Beter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.